Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. I'm Stephen Carroll and this is Here's Why, where we take one news story and explain it in just a few minutes with our experts here at Bloomberg. Something unusual is happening with the Japanese yen and it's been making headlines. Huge swings in the Japanese currency. We're up near 156 after hitting that 153 low. The question is still out as to whether there was intervention. We want to alert you again to what's going on in the currency market. A dramatic move with the yen spiking in value, advancing more than 1% against the dollar. It looks as though the Ministry of Finance has, has intervened. Biggest one-day move that we've seen on an intraday basis going back to early 2023. On Monday, a public holiday in Japan, the yen slumped past 160 to the dollar before suddenly bouncing back. And then it happened again. On Thursday, in the final minutes of New York's trading hours, a sudden swing stronger of about 5 yen. Figures from the central bank's accounts suggest officials have poured billions of dollars into the market this week to prop up the Japanese currency. But they haven't publicly admitted to it, and it's not entirely clear that it's working. So, why did they do it? To help explain, we've got Bloomberg Opinion columnist Daniel Moss with us. Hi, Daniel. What are the Japanese authorities up to? Japanese authorities have, for a number of weeks, if not months, been sounding the alarm about what they see as sharp, excessive moves in the yen. They're not overtly complaining that it is weak, What's been bothering them are some of the moves and the velocity of the change. And the yen certainly is having a tough time. It's the worst performing major currency this year. It's also the worst performing Asian currency this year, down by around 10%. And this is all the more startling because if you just go back a couple of weeks, amidst great fanfare, the Bank of Japan ended its negative interest rate policy and borrowing costs were pushed just above zero. Now, this was seen as epochal, a sea change. It was something that was going to give the yen some pep. Didn't happen. Here we are a month or so later, and the yen is reaching new 34-year lows. So something's wrong. Something wrong indeed. But what is it about now that's made those authorities step in? The extent of the moves certainly has been sharp. And this reflects a rapid repricing and recalibration of where people see the Federal Reserve and consequently the US dollar going this year. If you go back to the end of last year at his final press conference in December, Fed Chair Jay Powell really leaned into the idea that interest rate cuts, plural, we're on the way. Now, you've had a couple of months where, you know, that final mile of inflation uh, is proving more difficult than anticipated. And now people think, well, what if there's no Fed cuts? What if there's just one? God forbid, what if there's even a hike? So the dollar is, as a consequence, surging against everything. It's not just a yen story. But among major currencies, the yen is certainly getting hammered. So will the Japanese keep doing this, keep stepping into the markets? Do they have limits to what they can do? It depends what your objective is. I doubt that the Ministry of Finance wants to turn excessive yen weakness into a sustained rally. They can't do that because the fundamental economic settings of Japan relative to the United States don't back that. Ultimately, it's the fundamentals that matter. What they can do is manage the yen's decline, try to smooth out some of these sharp moves, and make some of the most gung-ho yen bears think twice at some of these levels. You know, who's going to be on the other side of that trade? Is it going to be the Japanese government? Perhaps I better get out of the way. We're getting into territory here where perhaps, you know, we need to tread a little more carefully. Just inject some doubt, make people think twice. Is it worth it for them to do that, though, given the massive amounts of money that are involved? Again, this gets to what you see as their primary objective. If the objective is to just, like, halt uh, the pace 
of this decline? Sort of like curb the velocity a little bit, curb the enthusiasm, to borrow uh, the title of Larry David's show from some of these yen bears, then they can do that and it's probably money well spent. You know, ultimately you can't talk for weeks and weeks about all options being the table and not pull this trigger. You know, Japan actually for quite a while was a long time player in the FX market, right the way through, say, maybe 2004, 2005. Now, most of that time, Japan was in the market constraining the yen's advance. Constraining its decline is something much rarer, but that's what we've been seeing in all likelihood this week. So you've laid out for us the dynamic here that set up this situation of yen weakness. What could shift that? What could make this situation change in the future? Interest rate reductions by the Federal Reserve, which Jay Powell has told us are not going to be forthcoming as soon as some might have wished, or the Bank of Japan has to start raising interest rates further. They need to be careful here. Japan's had a couple of false dawns where it's hiked rates over the last few decades and it hasn't worked out too well. You know, they just have to sort of grin and bear it, you know, and just try to change some of the psychology make people think twice about some of these, you know, rather extreme moves that we've been seeing. Daniel Moss, Bloomberg Opinion columnist, thank you very much for joining us on Here's Why. And you can read Daniel's latest article on this, Japan Should Leave the Yen Bazooka at Home. That's at Bloomberg.com forward slash opinion. And for more explanations like this from our team of 2,700 journalists and analysts around the world, search for Quick Take on the Bloomberg website or the Bloomberg Business app. I'm Stephen Carroll and this is Here's Why. I'll be back next week with more. Thanks for listening. Thank you.